This is all the continental pieces that we think were in existence about a billion one hundred years ago, okay? I'm sorry, a billion a hundred million years ago. Um, Eleven hundred million, how's that? So here's Laurentia or North America. It actually kind of looks like North America back then. Some of these other pieces don't. Baltica, which is Northern Europe, West Africa, Congo, Sao Francesco, these are all parts of Africa today. Kalahari, that's part of Africa today. Amazon and Rio de la Plata, those are parts of South America today. Here's much of Antarctica down here. Australia over here, South China, Siberia, you get the idea, right? There's bits and pieces of stuff all over the place. But what happened leading up to the Grenville orogeny is we built these things as a supercontinent. So they gradually, all these pieces come together, and look at that. North America sitting right in the center here. So there's the supercontinent of Rodinia, and then like all supercontinents, it breaks up. And it breaks up in different phases, things move around, there's some funky stuff going on up there. That's because this is a 2D projection of a 3D globe, but anyway. And at about 530 million years ago, the end of the Proterozoic, beginning of the Phanerozoic era, eon, we have Laurentia off by itself, and much of the rest of the continents in a new supercontinent called Gondwana that did not include Laurentia. So for the past 500 million years then, much of what has happened to Laurentia is that there have been various types of interactions with pieces related to Gondwana that have influenced the eastern shore of Laurentia. One thing to keep in mind here, this is all before Pangaea. Okay, so Pangaea is a supercontinent that everybody knows about and all, everybody's taught about in high school and so forth, but there was at least one big one before Pangaea, okay, and that was Rodinia about a billion years ago. And even after Rodinia, Gondwana didn't include us, but Gondwana was pretty significant throughout the next 500 million years. Pangaea is the most recent part of that story. But when we start looking at what was going on in the central Appalachians, what we're really now looking at is how did these various pieces of the breakup of Rodinia impact the eastern shore of North America? So, this next series of slides, and there's 40 of them, which means I'm gonna do this very fast, but the idea is just to get the overall picture of what's going on. Here's Virginia in red, okay? That's present day location, obviously. Um, this is gonna keep North America fixed and illustrate everything that happens relative to North America. When you do these reconstructions, you can fix things all sorts of, all sorts of ways. In truth, Laurentia itself was moving around the globe, and you'll see periodically this will appear on the side, which will tell you what way north was, and this line is the equator. So at this stage of the game, North America was actually on its side, just south of the equator. Okay? Uh, these images all came from a fantastic suite of paleogeography images put together by a guy named Ron Blakely at at Northern, uh, well he was at, at uh, Northern Arizona, yeah he retired. Um, but these are, th these are great and I steal them all the time and then modify them as I see fit. But I think they do a really good job of showing how things came together and how things changed through time or at least our interpretation of what we think happened. Okay, so here we go. At 550 million years ago, the last part of Rodinia is breaking up, and here it is. We're opening up an ocean here, the Iapetus Ocean. Gondwana, which are all those other pieces that were left behind, is moving away from North America. Okay, we're forming an ocean basin right through here. Um, this is the main events. These are the formations that we will actually see on the field trip, or most of what we'll see on the field trip. Okay, so. We have the extrusion of basalts, which is related to opening up the Iapetus Ocean, and then we have deposition of some sedimentary rikes right on the coast here. So we're essentially right on the beach? We're right on the beach, yes. Oh, yeah, right. 
That's right. Okay, so we open that. Now Gondwana is almost off the map down here, but we have an island arc system like the Caribbean today that is formed offshore of eastern North America. And even though Gondwana is moving away, this island arc system is now moving towards eastern North America. This faint little light blue here is supposed to illustrate where a mid-ocean ridge might have been at that point. Pushing the arcs this way, but Gondwana the other way. Okay? And these guys are gonna en end up colliding with eastern North America and be the next mountain building event after the Grenville. So these guys are coming close to it, but you'll notice that we also have a carbonate platform. In these images, whenever you see these sort of light blues to whites, it's a shallow ocean and it tends to make carbonate rocks. So this is the beginning of all of these carbonate rocks that we see in the Shenandoah Valley and Page Valley in this area of Virginia. The arcs get closer. Notice that the carbonate platform has enlarged and encompasses much of the southeastern US. They're getting closer. And one of the things that happens as these guys get close is you form a basin right here. Basically, you drop the edge of the continent down due to loading from the arcs. And you now start shedding a lot of material in here. This will be the Edinburgh Formation, which is that big fold that we're going to see on Wednesday. But the next thing that happens, as you can imagine, is these guys collide. And now we've got our second mountain building event called the Taconic Orogeny. Again, this is an island arc collision with the edge of eastern North America. And we start seeing, instead of carbonate rocks, we start seeing clastic rocks. We start seeing shales and sandstones getting deposited. There we go. Here's the Taconic Mountains. These are named, of course, for a region in New York, the Taconic Highlands. And they did extend all the way from the lower maritimes of Canada down through New York, uh, western Vermont, and all the way down into our neck of the woods and a little bit south of here, probably into Georgia. Okay. Now, so that was that collision. Now you notice something else is developing offshore again. So this is, we had the Grenville, okay, a billion years ago. Then we had the Taconic collision about 400-ish million years ago. And then the next one that's going to come in, oops, don't go twice, is going to be, thank you, Avalon. Okay, and Avalon is a fragment of Gondwana that broke off of Gondwana and migrates as a microcontinent and some associated arc rocks across the Iapetus Ocean before colliding with eastern North America. So those guys were arcs. This is a microcontinent, but it's got the same sort of effect, okay? It gradually approaches the eastern shore of North America, and we have the Acadian orogeny, which is the collision of one or more microcontinents with the eastern edge of North America. So now we've had our third collisional event, right? Grenville, Taconic, and now the Acadian. The Acadian is actually much more significant to the north because in the north you actually had a very large landmass, essentially northern Europe, which is called Baltica, that collides with the northeast of Laurentia, the Maritimes of Canada, a lot of effect up in New England. There were some major, major mountains up in that part of the woods. Down here, not so much. We do have some sedimentary rocks that result from uh, Acadian mountains that would have been here, but they wasn't nearly as significant down here as it was in the north.